we want to see a return to the free movement of labor across Europe. The French don't. The French want to build walls around France so that you can have the same shitty productivity and the crap unions you've had for the last 10 or 20 years here in this country destroying your economy. Britain was the same prior to 1980 when eventually they elected in Thatcher and Thatcher reformed the economy and eventually the French will probably elect somebody by mistake who will implement some effective reforms here. In the meantime, though, we need Europe to deliver some of these effective reforms. The challenge we face in Europe, it's what's interesting. I mean, we have been operating for 31 years. We're non-union. We employ over 10,000 people. The reason we employ over 10,000 people have been non-union for 31 years is because actually people like working for us. One, we pay them well, uh, but we expect productivity. And we're not going to tolerate a lack of productivity or some kind of social bullshit in France that you can, you know, with the greatest respect, and I love France dearly, but you can't stay in university until you're 35 and then retire at 37 and expect the state to pay for you. Um, we expect you to work and we like working. And ultimately, Europe is going to compete and Europe is going to get more efficient. Um, I think what happened, like, the issue we have, uh, the Irish passed a legislation, which is the same legislation for almost every European country, which is if you're flying on an Irish registered aircraft, pilots or cabin crew, you must pay your tax in Ireland. Now, it's legislation that was introduced by the French and the Italians about in the early 1960s to catch labor on the cruise ships because the cruise ships were all sailing around the Caribbean or the Mediterranean saying, oh, I don't work in France or Italy anymore. I'm working in the Mid-Caribbean. And they passed the legislation to say you must pay tax if you're a mobile transport worker, you pay tax in the country where your employer is registered. We do exactly that. And the Irish government requires us by law to do that. It's not because we are a low... I mean, Ireland has a reputation as having a low tax. And we have low corporate tax of 12.5%. But we have very high and very penal tax for labour, where on 35,000 euros, you reach the highest rate of tax, which is 57%, on just 35,000 euros. Our pilots today, our captains are earning between 140 and 170,000 euros. But they work on average about nine, have fly about an average of 830 hours a year, which is about 18 hours a week. The legal la limit in, in Europe is 900 hours, which is about 19 hours a week. So no pilot is going to fall out of the sky or fatigue flying 18 or 19 hours a week, although the unions would have you believe they will. What we believe, so, and then the French, because they don't like the European free movement of labor, pass a decree under Sarkozy, a so-called right-wing government, about a couple of years ago that says, but if you live in France, you must pay your tax in France. So we have the difficulty that our people under Irish law must pay their tax in Ireland. And then if they're resident in France, they must pay their tax in France, which means if you've paid 57% in Ireland, and then you pay another 52% in France, basically you get no money at all. And it's very difficult, even in Ryanair, to persuade people to fly for no money at all. So we will not have people based in France, but that's not the issue for us. The big challenge for us is what are you going to do about air traffic control and the air traffic control unions who are now there on Thursday. Tomorrow will have their 55th strike days of strike in the last 10 years uh, and who routinely close the skies over Europe when we're supposed to have a single market. The technology exists to allow overflights to take place over France without the intervention of a French air traffic controller, and Europe will not impose those on France. Yet in France, the impact of those strikes are minimized through minimum service obligations. So the French suffer the least uh, kind of disruption as a result of those strikes, but all the other airlines flying between Ireland and the UK, Italy and Spain suffer all the cancellations. It's manifestly unfair and something needs to be done. And frankly, we need to take out the air traffic control unions and say, screw you, you can go on strike as long as you like, but we're no longer willing to allow the skies over Europe to be shut down because you lot don't like your present government or you don't like something else or it's a Thursday in June and you feel like going on strike.